will fall away. And they'll fall away just by practicing these four agreements. So, so far we've looked at two. The first one was be impeccable with your word. By being impeccable with our word, and that means each and every word we say to ourselves and to others, when we're impeccable with our word, we can begin again and live in freedom. We learn to speak words of love, of wholeness, of compassion, of kindness, of God living and breathing and moving in and through us. This is the first and the most important agreement. The second agreement is don't take anything personally. This one and the one that we're covering today were the most transformational ones for me. The more I practice this agreement and the next one, the more I experience a level of peace and freedom. Now here's an example of taking it personally. A policeman was heading home after a long day on patrol. He had dealt with a whole succession of difficult people and a mountain of frustrating paperwork. All he wanted at this point was to kick back, unwind, enjoy some peace and quiet, and maybe watch a few innings of baseball on TV. But as he neared home, he was startled by a vehicle that came careening around a sharp curve, narrowly missing him. And as the car passed, the driver shouted out, pig. <laughs> Needless to say, the officer was suddenly energized. He slammed on his brakes, turned around the squad car and headed off in hot pursuit. But as he rounded the curve, he ran head on into a large pig that was standing in the middle of the road. <laughs> so how's that for taking it personally? Figured a joke would be good here. So let's move on. Today we're looking at the third agreement, don't make assumptions. Who remembers the TV version of The Odd Couple? Tony Randall and Jack Klugman did great jobs portraying Felix Unger and Oscar Madison. Well, there's a well-known scene where Tony Randall's character, Felix Unger, Unger, talks about what happens when we assume. And Dave's gonna share that video clip with us now. Ah! <laughs> So see what happens when we assume? <laughs> we have a tendency to make assumptions about everything. The problem with making assumptions is that we believe those assumptions are true. We could swear that they're real. We make assumptions about what others are thinking and doing. We, make, we take it personally. Then we blame them and react by sending them emotional poison with our word or in the form of anger, negative talks, frowns, avoidance. Don Miguel Ruiz writes, when we make assumptions, we're asking for problems. We make an assumption, we misunderstand, we take it personally, and we end up creating a whole big drama for nothing. All the sadness and drama you have lived in your life was rooted in making assumptions and taking things personally. Take a moment to consider the truth of this statement. The whole world of control between humans is about making assumptions and taking things personally. Our whole dream of hell is based on that. We create a lot of emotional poison just by making assumptions and taking it personally, because usually we start gossiping about our assumptions. And remember, gossiping is the way we communicate to each other in the dream of hell and transfer poison to one another. Because we are afraid to ask for clarification, we make assumptions and believe we're right about the assumptions. Then we defend our assumptions and try to make someone else wrong. It is always better to ask questions and to make an assumption because assumptions set us up for suffering. The human mind creates a lot of chaos which causing us to misinterpret everything and misunderstand everything. We only see what we want to see and hear what we want to hear. We don't perceive things the way they are. We have a habit of dreaming with no basis in reality. We literally dream things up in our imaginations because we don't understand something. We make an assumption about the meaning. And when the truth comes out, the bubble of our dream pops and we find out it was not what we thought it was after all. 
Now, the problem with making assumptions is that we believe those assumptions are true. We make assumptions about what others think or do. We take it personally. Then we blame them for what we have assumed that they are doing or thinking, and we make them wrong. When we make assumptions, we make mountains out of molehills, create conflict, and make ourselves miserable. We are continually making assumptions in every aspect of our life, including relationships. The author writes, making assumptions in our relationships is really asking for problems. Often we make the assumption that our partners know what we think and that we don't have to say what we want. We assume that they are going to do what we want because we know that they know us so well. If they don't do what we assume they should do, we feel hurt and say, you should have known. I have a great example of this. Years ago, I was counseling a woman who had been in a relationship for only a few months and she was angry. She said that he was always late. They'd make plans to get together for dinner and he'd always show up late. As she continued to talk, I could tell that there was a piece missing. When she finished, I asked her, what time did you set the date for? And she said, dinner time. And I asked again, yes, but what time is dinner time? She looked at me like I suddenly sprouted a second head. And she said, well, six o'clock, of course. Now the answer was obvious to me, but she didn't see it. I very gently said to her, have you asked him what time dinner time means to him? She looked at me with a blank stare and said, no. And then went on to defend why six o'clock is dinner time for her. Make long story short, the man she was dating didn't get home from work till six o'clock. So for him, dinner time was seven or eight. Now, that's a very simple example, but it's what we do. A simple thing like asking a question to divine, define what dinner time meant to each of them would have saved the conflict. John Bradshaw, who was one of the leaders in the field of codependency, said that the first 10 years of a relationship is spent resolving all the unsolved issues we bring to it from childhood. 10 years. <laughs> so we make assumptions in our relationships based on the history of our upbringing. He tells a story of a couple where the husband was sure that the wife didn't love him anymore. Why? Because when he was sick, she didn't bring him orange juice. You see, when he was a child and got sick, his mother used to bring him orange juice. So in his mind, if you loved someone and they were sick, you would bring them orange juice. He assumed his wife would do the same, but she didn't. So he assumed she no longer cared for him. I know this sounds silly to us, but this is how simple it is. Making assumptions really wreaks havoc. Now, had he the presence of mind to tell her, well, you know, when I was sick, my mom would bring me orange juice. Can you bring me orange juice? You know, just like my other uh, client, as an example, in her household, dinner was six o'clock sharp. So she assumed that that's how it was for everyone. In this person's life, bringing him orange juice when he was sick was with everybody did. Again, it's assumptions. Now the author says, it's very interesting how the human mind works. We have the need to justify everything, to explain and understand everything in order to feel safe. We have millions of questions that need answers because there are so many things that reasoning mind cannot explain. It's not important if the answer is correct, just that the answer makes us feel safe. This is why we make assumptions. If others tell us something, we make assumptions. If they don't tell us something, we make assumptions to, to, fill, to fulfill our need to know and to replace the need to communicate. Even if we hear something and we don't understand, we make assumptions about what it means and then believe the assumptions. We make all sorts of assumptions because we don't have the courage to ask questions. We have so many questions that need answers to feel safe. We have a fear of not knowing, a fear of the mystery of life. We don't like not knowing. Ask yourself right now, how comfortable, how comfortable are you with not knowing? 
How comfortable are you with saying, I don't know? To have clear communication, we are called to move through our fear and stop making assumptions. Imagine what a difference our lives could be if we made it okay to realize that we don't know everything and we need to ask questions for clarification. Simple questions like, I don't understand, can you tell me more? Or what do you mean by that? Or how do you feel about that? What do you think? Or this is one that I use often, I don't have enough information yet, can you tell me more? What would life look like if we stopped making assumptions? Stop making assumptions with your loved ones and with everyone in our lives. Your way of communicating would completely change your relationships and we would no longer have conflicts that arise from making assumptions. So these four suggestions of working this agreement will really help us to practice this. And the first one is ask questions. It's easy to jump to conclusions, but before you jump the gun or anything you might read or hear, remember one word, clarify. By asking questions and filling the blanks, you can weed out facts from fiction. And always, if you're reading something, always check the source. Always check the legitimacy of the source that you're using. So ask questions. It's okay to not understand. It's okay to not know. The second is to listen. Are you really listening to the person that's talking? Are you misinterpreting what they're saying? Are you finishing other people's sentences? Sometimes we only see what we want to see and only hear what we want to hear. Take the minute, take a minute to be fully present when you're with another person. Take a few deep, deep breaths, make eye contact with them and really listen. Not with just your ears, with your whole presence. Make it okay for someone to be who they are and just listen. And the third one is give yourself a break. Remember that you are perfect in your imperfection. We're all here learning and growing and living. And sometimes we make process progress by moving two steps forward and one step back. Recognize that. Be present to it and keep moving forward. Love yourself. That's the key. Love yourself. And the fourth is to practice. Don Miguel Ruiz wrote, taking the action over and over again, strengthens your will, nurtures the seed and establishes a solid foundation for the new habit to grow. After many repetitions, these new agreements will become second nature and you will see how the magic of your word transforms you from being a black magic, ma a black magician, black magic person into white magic. We have these agreements to really, these new agreements to really help us move forward in life, in peace, in love, in joy, and in gratitude. By adopting these agreements, we can make those changes a little at a time. Remember, it's progress, not perfection. And all above all, remember Felix Unger's interpretation of what happens when we assume. That enough should keep us on the straight and narrow with this agreement. So make, make a commitment to yourself. To don't make assumptions. Don't take things personally. Don't project onto someone else what you're feeling within yourself. And know that it's okay to be exactly who you are on your path as you practice moving forward with these agreements, these new agreements. 
Now I invite you to get comfortable in your seat as we move into meditation. So I invite you to take a deep breath and just relax in your seat. Just allowing all of your muscles to relax with each breath you take. You feel that life affirming breath of oxygen moving through you. as you relax and just let go. You breathe out tension and you breathe in calm. You breathe out conflict and you breathe in peace. You breathe out fear and you breathe in love. Focus on the center of your being, your heart chakra, and feel the love that you are radiating through you and beyond you. We are all on this journey together. And part of relationship is about learning. We know that people come into our life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And these ongoing relationships, relationships offer us great opportunities to learn. Whether it be a chance encounter where we just smile with one another and perhaps make that person's day for having smiled at them. Or whether someone comes in our life to just teach us or allow them to allow ourselves to teach them a lesson. Or whether we have a long term ongoing relationship with someone every day. We learn from one another. For there is nothing greater than a loved one, triggering those things within us that need to come to the surface to be healed. So I commit to myself today that when someone else says something I'm not comfortable with, I will not take it personally and I will not make an assumption. I will remain calm, present in the truth of who I am and I will allow whatever needs to come up to heal, to come forward so that I can heal. I can hand it over to the Holy Spirit to help me move through it. And I will not project onto someone else. I will not make someone else bad or wrong because I know it is within my power and my ability to heal. With each issue I confront, I release it and let go. One less burden, one less thing for me to move through. So right now, in this very moment, I bring to mind something that may be weighing on me. It may be the thought or an opinion of another person. It may be something that's going on in the world that's really troubling me, that I have a judgment about that makes me angry. And I take this moment, this opportunity to bring it to the Holy Spirit so it can be transformed. So right now, I allow myself to move deeper and deeper into the silence. And I join with the Holy Spirit for healing.
And now I bring to mind anyone who may be in need of prayer, all those on our unity prayer list, all those in silent unity. And we pray for our world leaders. We pray for all that everyone would know that there is no separation, that there is only the one. And as we do to another, we do to ourselves. We hold everyone in the light, affirm the Christ within each of them and know that their consciousness will expand to know the truth to know that there is only the one and that there is a power and a presence within them that will see them through anything that they are facing in their lives. We pray for peace. Mm -hmm. And most of all, we pray for ourselves so that we have the resilience to continue to raise our consciousness and live from our Christ selves. Amen. And now when you're ready, you can move your consciousness back into your body, back into the room where you are as you wiggle your fingers and your toes, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Uh, sorry, <laughs> God, I went so deep that I forgot everything as I was coming out of it. So I'm sorry. Um, all right, this is the time in our service where we have the opportunity to give. So I invite you to just visualize whatever method you use for giving. To know that the abundance of God is yours. All that we could ever want or need is there for us. As we allow ourselves to open up and receive. We look within for any, any tightness that we may have in our lives, anywhere where we feel we might be cutting off ourselves from the flow. We'll release that. And we know the importance of these gifts to keep our community growing to sustain Unity Spiritual Center. Because even though we're not meeting in the building, we still have all the obligations of maintaining a building, of maintaining staff. So we ask you and we thank you for giving so generously. So we bless, we bless these gifts and those who give. And I invite you to join with me together as we say, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I choose to give and all that I am open to receive and I am grateful. For our final song, uh, we have a new interpretation of uh, Leslie Gore's You Don't Own Me. This is You Don't Know Me. We lost the sound again. <laughs> you don't know me. Let me try that again. Give me one minute.